Welcome to Home Base Business with Carl Douglas. And today we have a special guest. Her name is Wanda Nira Butler, and she is actress, <laughs> producer, gospel artist, and international marketer. I've been looking forward to this interview for a very long time, and she's going to cover uh, her beginning. She's going to tell you who she is so you guys can get to know who she is. And um, let's go ahead and bring her in. Wanda, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? And, you know, I'm doing excellent. Uh, it's a beautiful Sunday, and, and I'm looking forward to the time we're going to spend. There's a lot of people right now, Wanda, wants to hear your story. They heard about you, and they want to know more about your story. So go ahead and take it away. Uh, well, I guess to start off, I'm a PK, which is a pastor's kid. Um, that tells you a lot about my story, just saying that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was brought up in church. I learned music in church. Um, you know, everything I know practically about music, um, I learned in my dad's church. Uh, so now I am currently a music and arts director um, at a church in Florida. And um, in between that, um, there was a lot of life going. Uh, like I said, I started off in church, but my first professional um, event happened when I was uh, 17, I believe, 17. And we did a movie called Fast Break. Um, which was a story uh, about Gabe Kaplan and he was recruiting these basketball players. And um, I just happened to lead the song that uh, was in the scene when they came to the church looking for a basketball player. So that was way back in the day. Um, so after that, I uh, started singing in groups. And then actually before my gospel career, took off, I did theater. Uh, my first professional theater tour was um, Evolution of the Blues. And we toured sh uh, Chicago and um, we stayed there for a long time at the Drury Lane Theaters. Um, but uh, then we went to DC, we did Kennedy Center and you know just different places around the country, um, which that is my passion. Theater is my passion. I love to sing gospel music. But the gospel music audience, y'all know, y'all can be tough on a sister. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you ain't swinging from the ceiling, you ain't doing nothing. So <laughs> I, I love gospel music, but uh, theater is my is my passion, and I've done it for a whole lot of years. <clears throat> when I first got introduced to you. You were doing a large concert in Oakland, California. That was incredible, uh, incredible performance, I have to say. Uh, and uh, you, my, you, my sister. <laughs> no, no. And I, I got to tell you, <laughs> I won your autograph <laughs> when I first met you. It, it was, it was interesting. So it's a lot of people who are watching this right now. They don't know what it takes to to get involved, and not, not only that, but you had a a uh, hit gospel uh, CD at that time. And uh, if you can get into that, how did that be become one of your first? It could have been your second at that time, but it was incredible. Tell us about the, the name of it and, and going so everyone can hear it. Uh, well, the fir very first one was called Reach For His Love, and that was produced by Melvin Seals um, in, San Francisco, in the Bay Area. Yes, yes. Actually recorded in San Francisco, but the video was shot and put it at the Oakland Auditorium. Gotcha. Yeah. So um, because San Francisco is the most popular city in the Bay Area, it was called Live in San Francisco. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the second one. Ha <laughs> ha. The first one was <laughs> in the studio in San Francisco. And that was, yeah, Reach For His Love. The second one was Newborn Soul. And Dude. that... That is still, that is still doing stuff. Mm. That newborn soul song, uh, it was written by Clarence Eggleton from the Bay Area, and um, I have pulled up. People text me and said, "You got to pull this up," and um, churches of different cultures <laughs> are singing it. And I'm like, "Wow, still," mm. and it's been a lot of years. <laughs> 
you, you know, Wanda, you have such a gifted, anointed voice. Uh, when you sing, you can feel the spirit within yourself. That's what I noticed about when you're singing. And not only that, before you even open your mouth, I, I can see you praying and bringing in the spirit and <laughs> asking God to give you the gift of song, whatever it is at that moment. And and I got to say, a lot of artists out there don't have that. They just sing. So they sound good. But, you know, you you reach in the spirit. OK, you, you're spiritually connecting. So you're a spiritual singer. That's what I'm going to I'm going to dub you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a night, yeah, a spiritual, uh, a spiritual singer. Okay, uh, I, I know. Uh, yeah, I, I know. I'm putting you on the spot. You, you can decline if you want, but I want you to give us a taste of something that's coming Daddy. from your spirit right now. Since it's Sunday, <laughs> <Daddy>. <laughs> oh my God, only family will do this to you. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, I. Hallelujah, 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 all is well. Hmm, I just made that up. That came from your spirit, that's why. <laughs> I, that sounds beautiful. Uh, oh, maybe, yeah, so yeah, I remember that. Uh, particular concert, but, and I, I got to tell you, I still today, if I'm low in spirit, I listen to your songs. Okay. So That's incredible. let you know, they're, they're going to be out there for hundreds of years. <laughs> well, okay. good, good legacy to leave behind. <laughs> so, so tell me more about about your struggle, people want to know, well, you know, I, I want to be a gospel artist, and but I'm struggling with this. Uh, talk about the struggles and how you were able to overcome those struggles. At this point in my life, I would say if that is a desire, you know, make the moves, you know, put the effort forward, speak it into the universe, you know, if that's what you want to want to be, um, you know, make your, let your requests be made known, you know, to God. But it is a struggle. I, I think I wanted to record. I didn't care about being a huge artist. I didn't care. I wanted to minister and capture it in a recording. That's what I wanted. The artist part, if it came, it came. If I got rich, awesome. But that wasn't my desire. And I got what I, <laughs> I got what, uh, you know, was the desire of my heart. But the game, don't be naive nor mistaken about the gospel industry. It is an industry. It is not a ministry. Please don't confuse the two because you have to learn the game. You have to play the game just as if, uh, just like you do in the secular world. Trust me, the money is green on both sides. Yes. And the people who are trying to get that money have the same rules on both sides. You can pray to condition yourself, your heart, your mind, uh, govern your ministry. But when it comes to that paper, to that dollar, you have to play the game. Read the paperwork. Get an attorney. You have to play. Don't go in with, who God going to do it? Yeah, I went in that way. Yeah, that didn't work out too well as far as the paper. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, I didn't, definitely. I didn't play the game because my heart was toward God. I didn't understand that it was a business. I didn't understand that. I'm just singing. 
and I'm just writing and I'm just giving. Oh, the people, I'm going to bless the people of God. And the producers and uh, powers that be, they love it when you come in like that. Naive. Mm -hmm, They're going to get you. <laughs> yep. young, young, full of energy and, and has the talent. Yes. Yes. And sometimes you have to ask the question. I mean, it's different now, but sometimes you have to ask the question, why is it everybody at the top of the ring, at the top of the money wrong, at the top of the record, the executives at the top of the, they don't look like us. Same thing been going on for years and years and years. Ma Rainey. <laughs> I mean, that movie tells it all, really. Uh, yeah, it, we're the talent. We are the talent of the world. We are, we are culture. And we have to learn. We have to learn the business because they've learned it. They've created it. So they know how to get You're only going to go so far. And I, I don't care how big an artist is, secular or gospel, at the top of the pay ring, they're not at the top of the pay ring until they take control of the recording, producing, mastering, until they take possession of that position. Am I talking too much? No, you're not. Actually, I'm sure they're taking notes right now and they, and they will be rewinding uh, this and if those who are not uh, doing that, you don't want it bad enough. But I don't think that's the case here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> keep going, Wanda. Keep t- telling us the A, B, C, D all up to Z. So they need to know this. Yeah, it, it's 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 really don't go in, don't go in uh, naive. And if you are naive and you want to keep your spirit pure, get a bulldog manager. Get somebody who's going to be aggressive and ask those questions, who um, in their their goal is to make you the record executive. You know what I mean? Uh, Beyonce yes. has her own label. Jay-Z, they doing their own thing. They didn't start like that. But that somewhere in there, they got the bulldog in them and say, hey, why are you getting all the money? Why are you getting all my money? I can get all my money. You know, and that hasn't been a... A easy road to hewn out um, because we have artists through time that didn't achieve that. And some even died. Yeah. Trying to achieve that. Um, what's my baby's name? Da, da, da. Sam Cook. Yes. Yeah. He was creating that for us. Mm hmm. And then mysteriously, yeah, that happened. Okay. Um, so I, I just, uh, I was doing, uh, you know, last month was Women, Women Heritage Month, Women's History Month. And so I did a big spiel for uh, the campus here of just women who had done a lot of firsts in history. And so my husband was like, did you put you down? I was like, what? He said, did you put you down? I was like, guess what? He said, you were the first black gospel record producer. Mm. The first black female record producer. And I was like, no, I, oh my God. I just, you know, because I didn't look at that as an achievement or that I was the only one at the time producing not only my records, but another artist. And I, I, I was shocked myself. I Googled a few things. They could say that they were the first. I'm gonna go back just a little bit, but, but you're right. People, you're more than a gospel artist. You are a trailblazer, pioneer, okay? And I'm sure there's a lot of artists right now probably contribute of uh, their success to things you said. I am one uh, that I got to tell you, you inspired me to identify who I was. When you said that uh, somebody who's not intimidated to talk to certain people who was a bulldog, mm-hmm. I've, I've seen you recognize that in me mm-hmm. when, I, when we did a certain, some, a, a couple projects back in the day. Mm-hmm. 
And and I took that upon myself to introduce that to my business I do today, even my radio uh, show right now. Wow. Okay. Uh, and and the people I met, they were surprised to see I was that type of person. Like uh, <laughs> the late Edwin Hawkins, mm-hmm. an example, Patty LaBelle, uh, uh, you know, this, I can, the names can go on, but, but a lot of people um, need to understand when you're in the business, you have to be strong mm-hmm. and not to be intimidated. Know your plan of action and go forward. Right. You are the talent, but you need those type of people with that kind of energy mm-hmm. to get you seen and get you heard. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I got to thank you for that. <laughs> well, in the somewhere in the 90s, I, I met a young woman named Victoria. He introduced me to Angela Perro. Uh, I've written several, uh, what you call the uh, uh, murder mystery dinner theaters that have been very successful in the uh, Florida area. And um, I'm having fun with that. I really am. I'm having because I get to cook and put on a performance. And uh, I don't all the time perform in them because I am the chef, <laughs> but it is very gratifying, very gratifying. And I, I'm loving it. When I was in Angela Barrow's camp, okay. Um, well, I worked on several of those uh, productions from um, Angela Barrow Dunlap uh, writing. I was major writer on her writing team. Um, Even like you said, the movie uh, we did with Robin Givens and Demetria McKinney with Sean Blakemore, Angela Winbush, and Karen Clark Shear. Yes. And at that time, Tasha Lockhart, who wasn't famous then, (laughs) but she is now. Uh, So what was that? Church Girl. Yes, we did uh, Church Girl together. I wrote a significant portion of that. Of course, all the churchy parts. (laughs) Um, But that can be another example of not realizing your talent, not realizing the greatness within you and letting someone else uh, take credit for your work. Um, the day I was asked to be a ghost writer was the day I walked away. I put too much in the game, in your game, for you at this point to ask me to be a ghost writer. No, no, no. <laughs> Tell me, I have, um, young artists right now who are getting in a lot of this, actors, actresses, and, and so on. Tell me, what kind of advice would you give them before they enter in this, this world of entertainment? Do the business. Learn the business. Um, there are rare occasions when I would advise, uh, you're doing nothing now, go ahead and do it. Get your foot in the door. But once your foot is in the door, uh, kick it open to drag your manager behind you. Hear me when I say. Because it's it's a tough business. It is. Uh, if you don't want to bring anyone in, uh, crack open those books, Google it, learn it. You know, but People wouldn't do what they do if there wasn't money involved in it. They want your talent because they see dollar signs. Not, ooh, that's a great talent. I really want to promote you. Let me expose you to, the word exposure can be deaf. (laughs) I'm so exposed, I'm naked. I don't need no more exposure. I'm overdeveloped. (laughs) <laughs> throw that camera out at some point in, and it's still now people will say oh no you need the exposure I got nine albums 
few nominations. I'm naked, y'all. <laughs> I have been exposed. And you're calling me now because you feel like I have something that you can use. So don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. You know. Yes, no, because the ones that have, have surpassed me, people who have some background for me, surpassed me and became bigger artists. Uh, I'm going to use this as an example. I don't believe she would, she would mind or she hasn't mind. But Yolanda Adams and I started the same day. Our records were released the same day on the same record label. Her producer took her off that label, knowing that it was just a stepping stone. I'm loyal. Oh, no, they gave me a chance. I'm going to stay. Well, in that stay, I am able to say that I was the first black female gospel producer. That's what came out of that. There, I, when opportunities came, I should have moved up, but I'm loyal, so I didn't. That's why you know Yolanda Adams' name, and what that other girl was, what her? That's why. That's why. Well, Wanda, I appreciate your uh, your parting words here, but let's do some shout outs here. Give me five people that you would like to do a shout out for, for their contribution in your business up to date? My husband, for, Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> for dealing with me <laughs> and allowing me to become, you know, who I am. He, he's a good guy. He, I know I took him through the ringer, but I think that run in the family, don't it, Jackie? <laughs> <laughs> But I, I know I have I have taken him through the ringer and you know he has stood by me and we just celebrated 39 years wow. marriage, yes, in March. So um I really appreciate him. I uh that's one uh mommy daddy, that's two, three, um Armin Baladian, who who was the uh, owner of Sound of Gospel Records, um, he did give me an opportunity to, uh, you know, to, to to record and to start. Um, Angela Barrow for my theater uh, experience. That's it. That's four. And your, I would also say your children too. <laughs> Well, that's, that would make it eight. <laughs> but yes, my children, of course, you know, I, I love them. They're crazy. And that's the way we like it. <laughs> and, and you know, we, we, we're going to have to bring you back, Wanda, and we can talk about those other journeys in your life. Um, I'm sure they want to, uh, to know about it. And there will be questions that's going to come out of this. We want to reply to those those questions. Okay, would you come back and and share some time with us again? Oh sure. Catch me on a makeup day like today. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that you're very busy, but um, you know, one thing I, I would I have also picked up as far as watching you is is who you know, mm -hmm. and how you treat those who you know. That yeah. seemed to be a very important thing with you because every time we did interviews in San Francisco and and uh, Sheila Robinson, things like that, you know, and her gospel show back then, uh, that I forgot. I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but but I I've learned from you how your customer service was when we went to Vallejo, went on the radio station, and and things like that. It, it's that customer service. People only oh, see at the time the, the lights and cameras goes on, but you can just turn it on like that. <laughs> just like that and and I, I i'm looking forward to definitely bringing you back and um and talking to you some more and answering those questions that's going to come after we uh release this uh folks you can see this once again on um youtube uh on our app 
as well as uh, we'll be talking about Wanda, of course, on Clubhouse. And we'll, we will invite her on Clubhouse as well to talk about her journeys as well as she would like that. That'd be great as well. So, but right now, Wanda, yep. once again, thank you for your time. We really appreciate that. No and we're going to see you soon. Bye for now. Bye.